Hello, class. Thought that I would do uh, one more lecture today that's going to, you know, look a little bit at conversion of units. I'm just going to sort of touch on that for a second, then we're going to re really get into two dimensional uh, vector addition and vector subtraction, figuring out what vectors are and <clears throat> everything else. So, uh, really, conversion of units, I just want to put down a, a, a couple things here. You know, 4.45 newtons equals one pound force, right? 3.28 feet equals one meter equals 39.37 inches, okay? So that we can just switch between the British gravitational system and the SI system of units. Uh, we know that uh, just, you know, although these are really two different things, one's pounds mass and one is uh, kilograms mass, uh, uh, we can say that if we wanted to look at, you know, mass, really at the surface of the Earth, that uh, one kilogram equals 2.2 .2 pounds mass. Right. You know, if we wanted to uh, really look at uh, mass in both of the two systems, uh, you know, we want to look at a slug, and a slug is uh, thirty-two point one seven. Uh, Uh, pounds mass. So, uh, you know, and how, how do we, how do we really get a slug? Yeah, I want to, I want to point this out. Now we know that a kilogram, um, is, uh, going to be 2.2 .2 pounds, uh, mass at the, um, surface of the of the earth right so if we uh look at uh, uh let me see um if we look at uh let's go to the force equation force equals mass times acceleration. So mass equals force divided by acceleration. So if we wanted to find out what a kilogram was, then that would be equal to a kilogram meter per second squared divided by meter per second squared, or we could write that as a kilogram meter per second squared times a, me a, a second over a meter, right? Now, we can cancel out uh, the meter. It, yeah, meters per second squared, sorry about that. Uh, and we can cancel out the second squared and we end up getting a, a kilogram back, right? Now, in the British gravitational system, we've got force equals mass times acceleration. So we've got mass, and you would think that this would come out to pounds or whatever, pounds mass, but, it, but of course it doesn't. See, because we've got force, and force is going to be equal to pounds. And then we've got acceleration, which in the British gravitational system is feet per second squared, right? So if we uh, look at a pound and, and look at a, uh, a pound in terms of Newtons, we know that we have um, 4.45 Newtons uh, in that pound. And then if we look at feet per second squared, well, we wanna change feet into uh, meters. So if we know that there's 3.28 feet in a meter, then uh, we just take uh, uh, 3.28, take the reciprocal of that and gives us 0 0.304. So 0 0.304 meters, isn't that a foot per second squared? Does everyone see how that works? So 
when we look at mass in the British gravitational system, we, we uh, have, uh, uh, you know, Newtons per meter second squared. Let's, let's just do that for a second. Uh, Newtons per meter second squared. So I've got a Newton, which is a kilogram meter per second squared divided by meters per second squared. And I think everybody can see where this is going. Sorry about having my hand over that. Uh, is it's just going to be kilograms, right? So it's going to, we're going to find out the mass, and we know what the mass in the British gravitational system is. It's called the slug. It's not the pound's mass, it's the slug. The pound is really a unit of force, no matter what it is. This pound's mass thing only, of course, works at the surface of the Earth only works at the surface of the Earth, right? So it's a slug in the British gravitational system. And let's see how many kilograms uh, that slug is, 4.45 divided by 0 0.304. And that gives me 14.64 kilograms. That seems a... Uh, Bit low, as a matter of fact, 4.45, 0 0.304, was that 304.8? Um, I'm sorry about that. I should have rounded that to 305, shouldn't I? So uh, 4.45 divided by 0 0.3048 uh, gives me like 14. Point, yeah, 14.6, so it even be lower anyway. That's fine. So uh, now that's supposed to be. <laughs> Why is that? Oh no! Yeah, that's right. Fourteen point six. Uh, I got and and that's right too. So a slug is fourteen point six kilograms. I. Uh, those are masses. Those are both masses. All right. So I, I'm pretty much done with talking about conversion factors now and how we work. I will. As we go through the semester, I'll be working with conversion factors and everything all the time anyway. So I'm sure that uh, if you don't already know how to work with conversion factors, um, you will by the time this uh, class is over. So let's get on to uh, vectors and vector addition. Um, first thing I wanna talk about is when we're talking about vectors, let's say that we got a vector A, and notice how I always put the vector sign over a vector A. And um, I, uh, I say, I, I'll just give it a 2i hat minus 3j hat. From the very beginning, I want to work in uh, three-dimensional vectors, if, if at all possible. Let's just work in two-dimensional ones here. But I still want to put the uh, uh, z component of that vector in there. So 2i minus 3j plus 0k would be the three-dimensional notation of a of a three-dimensional vector. Vectors, by the way, are only two-dimensional and three-dimensional vectors. Uh, when you get into four, five, uh, 15 dimensional um, things, uh, what, what we would call vectors if they extend it out, they're called tensors. So uh, two and three-dimensional tensors are vectors. Vector is a subset of tensors, but tensors follow very much the same Vector calculus rules that, uh, you know, vectors, their subset, in fact, all of them, that the vectors, their subset follow. So uh, be aware of that. And let's say that I, I wanted uh, uh, another vector, B, which was four times the vector A, right? Scalar multiplication of a vector. How does that work out? Well, if it was, then I would say that B is going to be eight I hat minus 12 j hat plus zero k hat. Do you see how that just uh, flows right through the, just a uh, vector, uh, scalar multiplication times a vector just increases the vector. Doesn't change the angle of the vector, but uh, changes the magnitude of the vector. All right. Now, let's say that we have uh, another vector c. And I'm just going to give this, I'll, I'll say it's minus uh, 4i hat uh, plus 2j hat um, plus 0k hat still, because we'll just work in two-dimensional vectors for right now. 
All right. Well, well, let's just draw these on a uh, let's draw these on a two-dimensional. Actually, I shouldn't have put that minus down there, should I? Because I want minus four, uh, minus three, minus four. Eh, that looks pretty good. Uh, probably could have left that up a little higher. I'll just do this now. I'll white that out and use something up there later on. So. Let's look at, so minus four i hat, one, two, three, four, plus two j hat would be right there. That's c. So let's draw that. That is vector c. And where's vector a? Well, it's two, one, two, minus three, one, two, three. So vector three. Uh, a, A hat is right here. You can see that those are almost 180 degrees apart, right? What is the smallest angle <clears throat> between those two vectors, right? What is that angle? Let's call that angle alpha, right? Now, if that angle is alpha, couldn't I just uh, draw a line across there? connecting the two ends of those and use the cosine law to figure out what the angle alpha would be. You know, I could do that. I could do that. Yes. But there's other ways that are simpler than that to figure out what that angle is between those. Right now, though, all I want to do is I want to add these two together, right? So if I add those two together, I think I'm going to get some relatively small number. In fact, if I was to follow, I'm just going to take this uh, transparent ruler here. If I was to follow that line parallel to that line right up here, I don't know how I could get that parallel to that line right up there, but that looks sort of parallel to it, doesn't it? And then I drew a line down here. And then I got this one parallel to that line. I'm not going to have an easy time doing that, probably. Let's say that I got this parallel to that other line. That would be about parallel. Oh, that's not too good. <laughs> that's not too good, is it? I guess uh, it would be right about uh, there, let's say. So now you can see that really this right here, this vector is the addition of those two vectors. So I'm assuming that this vector is going to have a negative x and a negative y. Let's see if that is correct when I add these two vectors together. So a plus b. <clears throat> oh, excuse me, did I say b? I meant c. a plus c, and it doesn't matter, a plus c or c plus a, I'm going to write that down there. It's commutative, just like in uh, arithmetic that we use in everyday life. So a plus b, a plus c equals c plus a. <clears throat> Let's add these two. So 2i minus 4i. That gives us minus 2i hat. Is that negative? Yep. Yep, it is. And then how about the other one? I've got minus 3j hat and plus 2j hat, which gives me minus 1j hat, right? So that is the addition of vectors a and c. And you can see that that's what we've got, minus two, minus one, that's the thing. And what have I done? I've completed a parallelogram, really, you know, not a rhombus, it's a parallelogram down there, right? And in completing that, I then found the addition. So that's what the addition of two vectors is. It's finding the, the, the diagonal of the parallelogram. If I were to make a parallelogram with these two vectors, with the other sides, uh, you know, perpendicular, where they intersected, that would also give me uh, what that is, the magnitude and the direction. All right. 
So that's, how, that's what happens when I'm adding two together. What if I added two three-dimensional vectors together? Let's say that, uh, um, I'll call it D. Let's say that I have a vector D and it is uh, minus two I hat plus uh, three J hat minus two K hat. I, I don't do anything different. Then I had another vector E and that vector was uh, four I hat uh, plus four J hat plus four K hat, right? That's that the, those are two three-dimensional vectors. It works exactly the same way. This would happen to be uh, two, well, that's not good, two I hat plus seven J hat plus two K hat, right? Does everyone see how that works? Just adding it together, very simple, straightforward, just like, um, you know, adding vectors or adding numbers together. There's nothing that is uh, all that difficult about uh, adding vectors together. And of course, that's what it's like in geometry, what the vector uh, would be like. Let me just grab a... Mm. <sighs> a little lemon water. Now, I want to go on and I want to start touching on some of the, you know, negative, subtracting works the exact same way as addition. I don't think I have to go through subtraction uh, of two vectors. I think everybody can see it's also commutative. It's going to work the same way as addition. What I want to do is I want to get into the multiplication of vectors. And so when we say the multiplication of vectors, there's two different ways to multiply vectors. One way is sort of along the same lines as what we've always thought of multiplication, and one is not. So let's just look at the multiplication of vectors. There's, there's two types of multiplication of vectors. There is the dot product, and there's the cross product. Both of these have meanings, and a lot of times uh, the dot product and cross product are taught without their real meaning, their, their behind the scenes geometrical meaning uh, meant. So that's what I want to do when I, I look at this. So if we had two vectors, right? Let's say I got that vector there and I've got uh, this vector here. All right, now, uh, this is not 90 degrees. I don't know what angle theta is, but it's not 90 degrees. So if I wanted A, right, let's say that's A and that's B. If I wanted A dotted with B, as far as an understanding of what we're talking about, uh, it would be, I'm just going to drop this down here now. It would be the component of A, of B, on A times the magnitude of A, all right? So, uh, well, I came up with those two, yeah, I don't know. Um, so anyway, uh, boy, I shouldn't use, keep using B, should I, could you, I mean, I'm, well, we can't use those. We've got to come up with a new A and B. I'll call it A, uh, A sub two and B sub two. How about that? So that we can differentiate as we move through here, just as a, as a uh, subscript on those. In fact, why don't I give you A two uh, and B two as far as their vector notation goes. I'm not gonna use some heavy duty vector notation, but we're gonna use some that's a little higher. So let's say that this is three I hat uh, plus two J hat minus three K hat. And let's say that B2 is going to be one I hat. Well, let's make it a negative one. Negative one I hat plus three J hat uh, plus two K hat. So we've got two different vectors here, right? 
And those vectors, of course, are, this is how we denote a vector in three-dimensional space, is i along the x-axis, j along the y-axis, k along the z-axis. Uh, if you skip that lecture, go back and, and read it, right? Because we have three unit vectors, uh, you know, there. So I won't go back and discuss all of that. I think everybody, uh, you know, understands that. So let's look at a couple things because I want to talk about the definition of the dot product. Now in our last lecture, we figured out what the magnitude, how to figure the magnitude using Pythagorean's theorem. So if I wanted to find out the magnitude of A2, that would just be three squared plus two squared plus three squared. And why do I say plus three squared? Because uh, minus three squared is still equal to plus three squared, isn't it? Exactly. And then we want to take all of that to the square root. So nine plus four plus nine, nine and nine, that's uh, 18 and four makes 22. So the square root of 22 is 4.69, 4.69. Now, do we know what that is? Do we even, do we even care what these vectors represent? Do they represent uh, velocity? Do they represent acceleration? Do they represent force? Uh, you know, there's a lot of things that they could represent, but right now we're just thinking of it in terms of uh, the easiest one, meters, right? And it doesn't really need any units right there. We're just talking about a vector. Vectors only need magnitude and direction, uh, not necessarily uh, units right now in, in learning them. All right, so that's, that's uh, 4.69. And if we wanted to know what B2, what the magnitude, now when I say magnitude, I wanna put absolute value signs around these. That's the notation that we use to determine the uh, magnitude of a vector. So we figured out the magnitude of vector a sub two. Now let's figure out the magnitude of vector b sub two. And of course that's going to be one squared. I'll do that one, that's one, plus three squared plus two squared, all taken to the square root. So that'd be nine plus four or 13. And so the square root of 13 is 3.61. All right, I just wanted to put those out there because we're gonna be using those in just a second. When we look at the dot product between any two vectors, right? The definition is it's the magnitude of the one vector times the magnitude of the second vector times the cosine of the angle between those two vectors. That's the definition. Did I turn that on? I hope I did. No, <laughs> I have no idea how long I have been speaking. So I, I really don't know, but I'm gonna finish off this lecture and then uh, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll figure out how, how long I was talking uh, the whole time. All right, um, so I've got my uh, magnitude of A and B, but what I wanna do before I do that, remember how I said before that, uh, you know, we really have the unit vectors and the unit vectors uh, are, are in the uh, i, j, and k direction, that the unit vector in the x direction is i hat, the unit vector in the y direction, that's y, that's x, that's z, uh, that's z, uh, is, is going to be j hat, right? And uh, that's quite a j there. And uh, the one in the z direction is going to be k hat. So we know that those are the three unit vectors. Let's look at how those vectors would work out underneath this, right? If I had i hat dotted with i hat, what would that be? That would be one times one, right? Because they're unit vectors, times the cosine of the angle between them. Well, what is the cosine? of zero degrees, right? We just have to refer back to the unit circle, don't we? 
with our cosine axis and our sine axis. And then we can just see inside our head, okay, uh, what is the cosine if this were all the way down there? If that was right at that point right there, what would the cosine be? Because the cosine is the x-axis, right? And we know that the radius is always going to be one because it's called the unit circle for, some, for, for a reason. So we know that if this is down here, that the cosine would be one. The cosine of zero is one. So that equals one, doesn't it? Now, how, let's do this. I dotted with J. Well, that's still one. The magnitude of I is one. The magnitude of J is one because it's a unit circle. But what's the angle between I and J? Isn't that 90 degrees? Isn't that 90 degrees? Isn't it also 90 degrees between uh, Y and, and Z? And it's also 90 degrees between Z and X, isn't it? So it's always 90 degrees. So the cosine of 90 degrees, look up there, you can see, well, the cosine now is going to be zero, isn't it? So anytime we dot non-similar unit vectors, it's zero. And every time that we dot similar unit vectors, it's a number. Now remember, the dot product always produces a scalar. That's the number that we got. It's not zero i, one i, nothing like that. It always produces a scalar. So that means if I was to dot these two together, only these things multiply. And then they add up, don't they? So a2 vector dotted with B2 vector would be, let's do this, three times minus one, right? Three times minus one plus two times three. I'm just doing this uh, so that you can see. I'm sure everybody's, uh, this is more review than anything. And then uh, last one, two times mi or, uh, uh, minus three times two. So that's the dot product of A2 dotted with B2. So minus three plus six minus six. So I get minus three. That's the dot product of A2 dotted with B2. Is it minus 3i? No. Minus 3j? My. Minus 3k? No. Nothing like that. It's just minus 3. That's all it is. So <clears throat> if I wanted to find the cosine of the angle between the two, then all it would be is a2 dotted with b2 divided by the magnitude of a2 times the magnitude of B2. Let's stick that in there. So minus three divided by 3.61, that's the magnitude of B, times 4.69, that's the magnitude of A, right? That, now this is gonna give us the cosine of that angle. We still have to look on the unit circle to see where it is but we know the cosine now of that angle. Let's just do this. That's minus three divided by 3.61 divided by 4.69. And that gives me minus 0.1772, right? Minus 0.1772. You know that where that would be? Let's just take this line on the unit circle and let's just draw this line now. It would be right about there, wouldn't it? That's about minus. So it's either gonna be this or it's gonna be this. 
right? Is it going to be that angle? Or is it going to be this angle? Really, one of those angles is a negative, and one of those is a uh, positive, isn't it? We'd really have to figure out what the sign of the uh, angle would be. But let's plug this into our calculator just to see what it's going to actually tell us. So if I do the inverse cosine of that, that gives me 100 degrees, right? So the angle, let's, where can I put it? The angle equals the inverse cosine of minus 0 0.1772. And so the angle then equals 100.21 degrees. Now that could be plus or minus. We don't know which one it is. We don't know if it's the plus or if it's the minus right now. But we can use another check, a definition of the other multiplication, the cross product, to double check this to see if it's either the plus 100 or the minus 100 uh, that gives us uh, that angle. All right, we'll be back. And the next thing we're going to look at is the cross product and see how the cross product uh, is going to help us determine which one of those two angles that actually is. All right. Uh, thank God I had turned it back on. All right. <laughs> I thought there for a while I'd done the whole thing without recording it. All right. Uh, see you at the next lecture.